You know, I think one of the things that changed me the most in my young adulthood, in my 20s, was that I traveled. I traveled a lot uh, because I was working for a family that was a lot wealthier than me, and they traveled a lot, and so it necessarily brought me to all different countries. And it made me, I guess, be able to contextualize America better, right? Because if you're like most Americans, you don't travel. Most Americans, I think, don't even have a passport. America is pretty big. It's pretty expansive. And so when you travel at first, you're definitely probably going to stay within the first, within the, within the 50 states. But when you get out of the United States and you see the rest of the world, you start to wonder about certain things. And something that I noticed is that a lot of countries are cleaner than America, and so recently, obviously, the big deal is how dare Tucker Carlson go over to Russia and notice some things. And one of the things that he did was a segment just about the grocery stores in Russia. He talked about how the prices were cheaper. He was actually amazed, like, because obviously the narrative have, has been that they're on the brink of economic collapse. And really what happened is he collapsed that narrative. You know, if, if America is so great, why are we the ones that are suffering at the pump? Why are we the ones that are suffering when we go to the grocery store? And he also highlighted how clean the subways were, which is something that I have noticed. The subways in our inner cities are absolutely filthy. It does not have to be that way. Again, it's not just in Russia. I don't want to think it's just Russia. Tokyo, you know, unbelievably clean society, also extremely moral and in, in, the stance that you could, in the circumstance that you could drop your wallet in Tokyo and someone would return it. Nobody would steal it. It just doesn't have to be this way. Well, the mainstream media is like, oh my gosh, we don't want people to notice. We keep telling everybody that America's great and it's fine. When in reality, it kind of feels like we've become the commies. You're just taking so much money from the taxpayer. We don't know where it's going. It keeps disappearing. You can't have any accounting. We're taking billions, but oh, uh-oh, we can't account for it anymore. We don't know where it went. Ukrainians are suspiciously buying yachts, but we don't know where the money went. We don't know where the money went. And people are starting to notice. And so these mainstream journalists, these mainstream nighttime talk hosts are now going, uh, narrative, what do we do? And so what they're doing is they're trying to convince you to take pride in the filth. I'm not kidding. Listen to the narrative. Listen to Jon Stewart on The Daily Show tell you why you should be fine with the filth. Right. Because the difference between our urinal caked chaotic subways and your candelabra beautiful subways is the literal price of freedom. <laughs> You're free, guys. It's We're free. Just enjoy that. Okay, who cares? They've got candelabras lit and, and nice music, and it smells good down there. At least you're free. By the way, do you guys feel free right now? That's the thing I love. Do you Are you feeling the freedom as we've had to fight speech censors, how they've gotten very dramatic as they're trying to force vax you at work? There had to be an actual lawsuit to stop that, and people being force vaxxed. And because it's obviously wrong and it's absurd that it even had to go to the Supreme Court. Yeah, your government wants more and more territory, is making more and more incursions into our personal lives. But hey, no, 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 no. At least these people want you to know that that is the literal price of freedom. Everything will be filth. We are going to force vaccinate you whenever we want. We're going to force vaccinate your children. Uh, we are going to essentially declare a war on the family unit but it's still free. Maybe if they say it enough times, we'll believe them. So let's now cut to CNN's Fareed Zakaria, who's also weighing in and, and trying to remind you with a lot of passion that it's totally fine if everything is filthy. Take a listen. American cities are expressions of democracy, places where people have to negotiate differences and find ways to live together. That makes them messier and dirtier and sometimes chaotic. But perhaps that is what has made these cities so vibrant and innovative and why they have been at the forefront in making America the country that leads the world in economics, technology, culture, and power. Uh, so much there. Vibrant, innovative, our cities? Is he serious? The, these, are the, these are the cultural hubs. Our cities are vibrant. I don't know. Let's cut to this image of the streets of Philadelphia today. There you have it, 
That's the cities that I know, right? They've got tents. They've got people that are obviously addicted to drugs that are shooting up because we provide them with the drugs. We want to make sure they have safe needles. These people are zonked out. They look like zombies, if you're looking at this clip, and they're content because they're probably also getting debit cards so that they can continue to do drugs. We know that New York City is facing a migrant crisis. We know that San Francisco actually has to hire people to pick up human poop. But guys, Fareed wants you to know that, I don't know, that's just a symbol of our democracy. Don't you believe him? That's what it means. It's an expression of our democracy that we come together with drug dealers and people that are committing crimes and people that you should be fearful of in the subways. Yeah, so what? Someone might throw you in front of a subway. So what? These cities are vibrant. That's, that's actually what, that is the vibe, right? You might get thrown into a subway at any moment by a person that is homeless, by somebody that was just released right back onto the streets because of their democratic policies. I, I just can't believe they're doing this. And what, what, are the, what is the point here? I guess what they're looking for is to memory hole the America that I grew up in, right? I always say that everything started going downhill rapidly post 9-11. The more that we gave up our freedoms, the more that we said, we will trust the government to figure this thing out, the less free that our society became, the less clean our society became, the less safe our, our, our societies became. And they're hoping that this next generation who will have no memory of those cleaner and freer cities are going to be okay with this. That they're going to go, oh, yeah, well, that's just the price of freedom. Uh, it would suck to live in Russia or Tokyo. Would it suck? Would it actually suck to live in Russia and Tokyo? Should we just accept that narrative and just believe it because they keep saying it? Because it's feeling like actually the communists are here that we actually have given the communists and the Marxist power and that democracy and freedom and cleanliness is in fact an illusion. We have none of those things right here. Again, I can't even say what I want on YouTube, right? You misgender someone, I'm gonna slap on the wrist. This isn't a free society. Come on, come on, stop kidding with us. Hey guys, if you like this video, you will definitely like the full episode even better. You can find it by clicking right here.